Well, last night we saw some action-packed matches. The Melbourne Storm with a narrow victory over the Gold Coast Titans, 22 to 20 in the end. Bill, were you surprised at this scoreline, considering Melbourne have been such an informed team, and the Gold Coast Titans just got their first win last week? And they started well, the Melbourne Storm. I think it was 20 to six to start the game. So, oh look, not really because the Gold Coast have put a really good month together. Um, they've lost three games by an accumulative total of seven points. So, golden point against the uh, the Raiders. and So, th they're fighting hard. They're doing a lot right, the Gold Coast Titans. Um, but to claw their way back into this game was, was certainly fitting for them. Um, Melbourne just got a little bit too much class early in the game, come up with points. Um, Obviously, we'll touch on the Ryan Pappenhausen injury shortly, but you know, him going off and uh, yeah, just a, a couple of reshuffles didn't certainly help him. But uh, they're going to right the Gold Coast and Melbourne Storm. They just keep winning games by short margins. I think it shows the quality of the Melbourne tries. Actually, how good the Gold Coast are going. Mm. You know, there was two tries off scrums, which were done to perfection, and then the other two tries off Sean Bloor, which were just you know incredible ball work, really. One guy for the Gold Coast Titan that's playing the house down at the moment was uh, is AJ Brimson. Oh, how he's, good is he? You can just tell he's super fit, he's rock hard, um, and he's playing as, as good as I've seen him play, obviously back in that fullback role. This was a great game. I enjoyed it. Mm. Footy last night was great. All open, unstructured. Just love watching uh, fast, open footy. What about um, Joey? Cameron Munster, a yeah. milestone match for him. Mm. His 200th NRL game. Uh, incredible to watch. What did you make of his performance? Well, it was just Munster-like. He's coming into the game, no one could tackle him. He's so good to watch. He just, he must be so strong and balanced the way he gets those, that fend out. Mate, the tackle he, the tackle he did on, I think, was it, uh, was it AJ? To save the try. Kieran. Kieran, no one. Oh, yeah. Kieran, well, that was ridiculous. He come up, there was some couple of plays around uh, Munster. There was that one which I thought the referees really could have took a stand on. Then that one, I think he should have been penalised. He had his arm out. But he just knows how far to push. He's just got that down pat. He, he's ahead of the game. Like out there on the field. And then when you, like you talk to him, he's so wired. But on the field, he's, he's ahead of the game. He's, he's, I reckon he's... He's footy smart. He's just it, it, footy smart. He's just... Better than everyone else out there. It's a, it's a good phrase to associate with him ahead of the game. But at, in the moment, he doesn't even know what he's doing. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, he's ahead of the game, but, but he doesn't know. It's, Billy, it's all instinctive. Is he footy smart? Oh, absolutely. Yeah? He absolutely footy okay. smart. And, and the other thing he is, he, he works hard. He may... Trains hard. He, he trains yeah. hard. Works hard on his game. He cares about his footy. He loves footy. Um, and, and that sometimes gets overshadowed by... You know how jovial he is. He's a bit of a larrikin. We all know that, and we love that personality in Cameron Munster. Um, but he certainly cares, and he works really hard. Uh, someone else that we um, care about, Ryan Pappenhausen. This mm. was uh, heartbreaking to see. Uh, he suffered a fracture. Now it's a fracture in his fibula, right above the plate that was inserted uh, last year. I think it is probably some positive news that it's only four to six weeks. But you never yeah. want to yeah. see someone who's had such a horror run with injury s suffer another one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's never positive when you hear Ryan Pappenhausen's left the field with an injury um, and it's associated with his, with his previous broken leg. Um, I was in contact with Paps last night and obviously he's, um, he's quite dejected because of you know, going through a, another rehab. He knows what's in front of him. Um, look, the plate is obviously still in his leg from the last break. Um, therefore, it's actually broken in a different place. Um, so he will have surgery and yeah, wish him all the best. It's obviously yeah, heartbreaking for him because we all know his history in time out of the game and reasons why. Um, so hopefully he's back on deck shortly. With him out of the game, we of course saw the highlights that um, Joey saluted early mm. in the in the uh, show. Falongo, he's so impressive. Does that mean yeah. he just comes straight into fullback? Well, as long as he gets over his knee injury, because he left the field with a knee injury yesterday as well. Uh, he he's a super young man, um, yeah, literally superman. And look <laughs> at him; he, he plays like it too. And he's he's got a great work <laughs> ethic. He works really hard. He's a young guy still developing um, in the game. Um, he, like Joey touched on earlier in his salute, he, he grew up in Samoa. He moved to Melbourne, Victoria, 
at the age of 13, lived with his family. His family have since gone back to Samoa. Um, he is a... Uh, he is such a wonderful player. You know, we all love it. watching him. Sarevi. Remember the Fijian Sevens player? Sarevi? No. Mm. OK. To answer Sorry. your question, it, uh, he, he does come in. Yeah, absolutely. He comes in to play fullback. Um, look, he got the opportunity to move Nick Meany back mm. there as well and put someone else in the centres. But I think Sewer uh, deserves his opportunity. He's if ready he, to play fullback? Absolutely okay. ready. Uh, we've seen that when he's, when he's come in and played. So... If he's fit, um, I'm sure he'll be there. Mm. He's so exciting to watch, and what an opportunity this is for him. Wasn't the All Stars few... game the start of the year where he lit it up? Was the it the Pacific was Championships? Yeah, last, last year, year, played for Samoa. Mm. And no one could yeah. tackle him. No. Mm. Even in his up. debut game at Suncorp Stadium at the back end of last mm. year. I think we were sidelined for that one, yeah. watching him, and he came on late during the during the game, and yep. Pappy shifted. Yep. And, and he linked up with Ron Pappenhausen mm. for his first try. They played a bit of footy together because when Ryan Pappenhausen came back through the Queensland Cup last year, he played alongside Sua. Sua moved to the wing. So they've got a good relationship, those two. A daunting task, though, for someone, you know, coming in and taking reins. But for him, it does Coming into the like team he's... that's leading the comp, mm. yeah. he'll be OK. Yeah. He's confident. Um, He's confident. I'm good. Yeah, he looks it, scoring a yeah. try. He looks pretty confident. Okay. Uh, all right, well, let's have a look at the Cowboys and the Dolphins from yesterday as well from Queensland Country Bank Stadium. Uh, the Cowboys, they suffered their fourth straight loss going down to the Dolphins, 28 <laughs> points to 26. What were your thoughts on this one, Joey? I loved it. Once again, really entertaining game. A lot of ball movement, a lot of offloads, unstructured play. Uh, Cowboys got to an early lead. I thought, well, here we go. They're going to put 30 on them. It's going to be the Cowboys of old, but then once again, the Wayne Bennett teams, they hang in, and when they get momentum, they just go bang. What about the teams that have got to an early lead in this round? Every team that has got to an early lead has been beating bar the Melbourne Storm, who very well could be could have been beaten by the Titans. So there's something about not just starting well, but sustaining your start. You know, the game goes for 80 minutes, and she's a long game. And the Dolphins have done wonderfully well. Like the injuries that they've got in their second year into the competition, they've got a fair DNA about them, about some toughness and grittiness and willingness just to work hard for one another. Um, they're going along nicely, sitting in the top four. Are you ready to write off the Cowboys? No. Not write them off. I still. Uh... This was a great setup. This. They've done this plenty of times. Got to leads and you know had just poor defence, weak defence. They've given up a lot of points this year. Um, I thought watching Nick Arima and Scott Drinkwater. They're so silky, yeah. both of them. Just the way they Nick get Arima across the ball, field and slide into space, and they have both got a really beautiful soft pass, and they were awesome to watch. Well, I heard Look Nick at this. Ar this is brilliant from Nick Arima. I, I heard him talking after the game in an interview that he did, and he spoke about a conversation that Wayne Bennett had with him in the preseason. And Wayne spoke about he needs 17 players physically willing to, to defend. He need, needs to have a good defensive team. So it really challenged Jaden mm. Nicarima and, um, oh, sort of Cody Nicarima. And um, it, for him to speak about that in an interview, it's obviously consciously on, on his mind. And therefore, he can outlay this stuff because this is so natural for him. Yeah. Uh, Good. How frustrating, though, for the Cowboys. It's been a couple of weeks in a row of last week. They had, was it last week against the Penrith Panthers? It was a, a close one to finish as well. It's errors, defence. It must be so frustrating for the team and the coach as well. We only have to listen to the coach in the press conference to hear how frustrating it is. He's, he was really disappointed with that. And, and the way that they started, they started really fast, aggressive, strong. They looked like they were on a different level to the Gold Coast and with the talent in their, their team on paper, to be fair, that they, they probably are. Um, but unfortunately, you've got to sustain it for a long period of time and that's been their challenge for a while now. One thing I noticed was their bench. They had four sort of big forwards on the bench. And Luke, was, Luke he played in the middle for a bit. And I looked at the Dolphins and the difference ended up being speed. You know, maybe going through a bit of a transition. It used to be a lot of benches, you know, four big forwards just rolling through the middle. Well, now, you know, I think uh, there was a few teams on the on the weekend that had, you know, little people on the bench and, and it sort of works, you know, having little or faster people come on at the right time. What about the try late to Avarillo? I'm sitting at home and I'm thinking the bunker is going to take this off him. They kept looking at it in super slow motion. Oh, here was the, uh, oh, the field goal. I, I did notice this, actually, and, and it didn't get brought up or... or 
made aware of, but this was the last play of the game. Drinkwater goes for a two-point field goal and has his leg clipped. Mm. Now, if you think back to round six when Josh Aloyer did the same thing against the Warriors and Sean Johnson hit the ground and made a bit of a deal about it, it was actually brought back to, to a penalty. Uh, the Cowboys could have actually had a penalty there to level mm. the game up and send it into goal. It's happening court. a lot, isn't it? A lot it of players is. hitting the feet. Like, you can tell yeah. they're obviously not going in with malice, but... Well, it's desperation to save the game. Just not getting their positioning right. You look at... Yeah. Well, the best in the game at the moment is Kikau. And you watch his lines very different than most others who are charging down kicks. Well, he's he, outside the foot. He comes outside the foot. Well, yeah. most of them are coming from, yeah... Straight they're on. They're running out or the instant. foot. Yeah. He comes from outside, but... Um, yeah, you're right. It's, it's one of the things we're, we're looking at the game and you look at Munster throwing his hands up, mm. then you're looking at Scott Drinkwater not throwing his hands up. So it's about... Playing to the... Well, but then... You know, well, the players much... know the rules. You know, obviously, Scott Drinkwater didn't really yeah. understand what was going on there. He, he was more worried about the kick. Well, good which, on him. which is, yeah, good, good on, on him. Good on him for not Exactly. Mm. Just good on him. But yeah. as soon as you change an interpretation or, or you have a rule change... The, the game will change somewhere else. Mm. So it's why we're talking mm. about it now because you've got two games where the game is on the line, they go for a field goal, they miss. One is a penalty, one is yeah. just full time. Mm. A frustrating one for the Tigers, Freddie, but another win for the Bulldogs. Yeah, I think it's more that. I thought the Bulldogs were just too good. 14-6 uh, down and then got to 22-14 and it was 22-14 for a long time. And they just held it off and the game, they just looked in control. Um, and forced, I think, the Tigers into a bit of frustration towards the end and end up holding on. So, but a pretty good game of footy, I thought. I liked it. It was a good game, wasn't it? Mm. Really fast and open. And the Bulldogs now in the top eight. Yeah, they're, but they're building. It's the defence. It's 14 points. They're only chasing 14. Last year and the year before, they were chasing 30 every week. It makes a big difference to your mindset and your ability to. To, you know, to play and play together and not be frustrated with pressure all the time. Well, they're going to get pressure this week. It'll be a big test against the Panthers because there's a lot of former Panthers in this group, even their coach. So they play the pressure game. They're trying to get that consistency with the pressure game, but no one does it like the Panthers. So it'll be a huge test this week. We mentioned it was a fiery finish, Joey. What did you make of the situation at the end with Reid Marnie? Oh, it's, it's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. The, the, we talk about rugby league being gladiatorial and they come in and push and shove and it boils over and then eventually he's that frustrated so far that he, he has a flying headbutt because Reed Marnie's coming in third man and this is a couple of times he's done it this year to agitate and carry on because there's no fear of being punched in the head. God forbid you can't throw a punch, but you know what? You get that frustrated, you've got to headbutt someone. There's no natural justice on the field, there's no consequence, and for little blokes to run up to big blokes and carry on and get in their face, I just it drives me mad. Because in the 80s, they wouldn't have done it. Could you imagine a little bloke running into Les Davidson or Blocker or Paul Harrigan? They'd just go, snot. And they, you know what? They'd never do it again. Mm. Now, Reed's a really good guy. I like Reed. But Reed, you, you're going to finish your career, mate. And... You don't want your legacy to be, oh, he was an agitator, he was a grub, he was a pest. He's too tough to do that. He's a tough player, he rips in defensively. He doesn't need to do this absolute rubbish. And once again, they've stopped the punching, which I disagree with because once it kicks off, it gets all out of the way. But then also, there's consequence for your behaviour. Nowadays, there's no consequence. Little boys can get up in their face and do this and carry on. There's no fear. Well, the, the consequences of the one against the Knights was he got fined. And he'll get fined again. The problem was kick out because the tackle was OK. The tackle just looked dramatic. It was certain and, safe fast. And yeah. then there was a penalty straight away. So I actually haven't seen the tackle close enough to whether he actually got head contact. Because when they hit... Um, there was no head contact. There was no head contact. On, so the the tackle Karaz. was fine, but it just looked dramatic. It was actually Kickow that grabbed it and started. Kickow is the one that should be fined. Yeah, but then and Reed, Reed came no, in. No, then Reed Money gets in. fined on, on top of that because mm. it's quite ridiculous. And there was a quote there saying, I'm going in to protect my teammate. From what? What are you protecting them from? Getting their jersey pulled? Like, there's no, oh, there's no protection these days. You know, like, people aren't getting bashed 
like they were in the old days where actually, yeah, there are people who well, knew only... how to fight and stick up for people because there were violence on the, the ground. The only person who needed to defend himself was Seyfarth. Because at the end of the day, he did nothing wrong outside the rules and, and he would have felt attacked. Well, he but went he's into... defending himself. Yeah. He went in to smash Karaz and Karaz Legally. went late foot, late f left foot. Yeah. And his timing got messed up and it was ugly. But there was, there was no shoulder charge, there was no head clash at all. And as you said, Billy Army came in. Yeah. But then what escalated it was Rude coming in and pushing him and carrying on and screaming. It's just like, Rude, you don't need to carry on with that rubbish. No mate. one should be coming you're in. You're too good a player to do that. You can't touch anyone. Unless you're tackling them, you shouldn't touch them. Mm. There's no touching. Get out of it. Like anyone who's, who's, you know, comes into the game and touches the other team if they haven't got the ball, you're penalty or fined or whatever it is. Game's too hard to be worrying about, you know, escalating, escalating stuff that, you know, it all, at the end of the day just looks, looks ridiculous. That push and shove in the current, do you find it embarrassing watching it? Not, not just in this game, but when you see it over the last couple of years. Well, it just shouldn't happen. Don't touch people. Just get on with the game. You, sh you should never have to touch anyone if they haven't got the ball. Simple. Mm. Well, we'll have a look at the match review committee as well, see what their findings have been this morning. I think it's fair to say not a lot of people saw that one coming. I think it, many nope. predicted a closer scoreline. On paper, it looked like Brisbane would put 20 or 30 on them. Considering the players the Roosters have got out, I've got to say, the way the Roosters are playing, they are so good to watch. Uh, and on the back, I'm seeing Walker, the way he's playing, but they are playing so well. Geez, they're playing well, the Roosters. I thought they it showed um, a couple of weeks ago when they played Melbourne. Weeks. I thought their online defence just had to find another level. And I, you know, it did against the Broncos. Like, the Broncos do it better than anyone. They're faster than every other team. And I thought their defence, the Roosters, just put them in a good position. They were, uh, they were quite poor in attack. They were, the Broncos. The Broncos. They, they just, they were going all out attack. And it's Reese. Reese made a lot of error. And it's such a fine line with Reese Walsh because that's his mentality. He plays, but he made some bad errors, which then, on the back of that, puts so much pressure on your forwards and takes their petrol away from them. Um, but he, it's a fine line with Reese. You're going to let him. You got to let him play that way. But he's got to know when to hold him. Does, he have, fold does him. he have another way? He's got to, you can, as learn, he gets you older, can learn other ways. And, and you're alive that when you're young. Absolutely trying to win the game so yeah. early. Yeah. They're trying to win the game off every set. And they've just got to learn to build the pressure. And they're going to have to do it without their most experienced player in Adam Reynolds now. But just on Reese, like when you're an exciting player and you create <coughs> excitement for the game, there's a pressure to always create that excitement. Mm. And he's 21 years old. He's still learning how to manage that part of his game. So, um, yeah, there, there was a couple of tries that he that he was involved in so you can't take that all away from him mm. what about the injury to adam reynolds so they're saying that he he's hopeful he'll be back for the finals mm. uh they're saying that he's Ooh. aiming for round 22 23 what happens to the broncos over this next chunk of the season well who they're going to play because um jock madden, jock madden has, has a, a, rib a rib cartilage. cartilage i think they may go ezra at halfback tristan, tristan. sailor 5 8 and then uh, reese at fullback um, the next seven games, the Broncos, they have two buyers and they play um, only two top eight teams, which is Manly away and the Sharks up there. So they're winnable games for them. But once again, if they're going to win the comp, you've got you to finish in the top four. If they don't finish in the top four, they can't win it. No one's won it in the last 30 years. So how Being outside the top four. Do you see this injury really reducing their chances now? Uh, a little bit. But you can look at it either way. You can look at it's exciting for Ezra Mim. Ezra has made noises. He wants to be a halfback. I think it's a great opportunity. I, I think it is a great opportunity for these young players to develop. Now, Adam Reynolds is certainly a key for the premiership push. There's no doubt about that. Mm. And the fact that he's going to be back with a month of football to go, um, that's nearly perfect for him. You know, get Rest your body him right. Up, him up. Stay fit. Um, it's it's a bicep, so he's going to be he's going to be able to run. Mm. Um, and you got young Ezra Mam, um, Jock Madden, who will hopefully come back into the side in a few weeks. Tristan Sailor's there. You, you can you can develop these players in that two three month period that Adam Reynolds is out. It, it is a great opportunity for the Broncos. Yeah. Tristan's well and truly good enough to hold a position. Oh, 100 yeah. percent. Well and truly. The only yeah, so big challenge for him is going to be 
how they finish their sets off in attacking situations. When Adam Reynolds went off, their short kicking game was it was not that. Well, great. what you've seen from Ezra Mam, could he jump into the seven jersey and take control? Yeah, I did. Yeah, for sure. He played well with the ball in hand. The only thing for Ezra will be the attack and kick and go. Yeah. That's the big challenge. We'll have to see what they do this week because they've got a big clash coming up right here on Nine's Wide World of Sports on Friday night up against the Eels. The Eels have had some tough times previously, so they'll be wanting to... Look at our game. Look at all them heads. Well. What's Regan Campbell Gillard <laughs> doing there? Have a look at our game. How good is our game? <laughs> the Manly Seagulls, they've been a, a red-hot team so far this season. And for the Raiders... They're coming off a huge loss last week and oh, were missing some key players as well. They were gone. Absolutely gone, the Raiders. But Ricky's got them believing. Uh, Manly, they've hit a little bit of a flat spot. And you do that during your career. I wouldn't be too worried, Manly supporters. But all credit to uh, Ricky and the Raiders. Jeez, they're playing Elliot tough. Whitehead. Mm. Incredible. He came up with a piece of play right here. Little intercept, <laughs> ended up on his knees and then flick pass. That's... <laughs> That's Benji Marshall stuff, that. He looks like he should be playing A-grade Then he somewhere. scored a try just after that. He he, he really made a difference. And then he that. got this one. Right wow. time, right what place. A, what a game. That was his first game back as well. Yeah. Yeah, he played really well. Well, that's what I liked about the Raiders team. Like last week, we saw all those kids brought into the team. But this week, they brought Chotrich back, Emre Gula back. Elliot Whitehead back. All of a sudden, you had some of these blokes that have been there, you know, through some good times to the Raiders as well, and just out of that little bit of experience, I thought, just to the, just to the team list, would have given those halves a little bit more confidence. You know, we talk about that bench position in Origin, mm. Hudson Young. Could you see him playing centre if it was an injury in the outside back? Because I have no doubt he'd be dynamite in the middle of the field, bringing him off the bench. Yeah, he's a good player and he's speed. He's very fast. He's a try scorer. He's very fast. Yeah, he scores plenty of tries off kicks. I know you spoke the other day about Tungall from Penrith. Yeah. You know, he gives you ability to play centre and back row. Uh, Kirk Cable was great at it. You know, just having confidence, you know, as a coach to go, you know what, if something happens, you can put them there and you're safe to say, well, you know what, they're not just going to flood it and, you know, get points through there. So it's a tough position, but he's never really played there. Hud so, uh, Hudson. Yeah, but you know, I haven't what? seen him play first grade there. He's like, got. He's Kirk got... Cable's different. Where you've seen it regularly, him going down to the you know, centres. You've got to actually have practiced it and been in the game to, I reckon, to be able to handle it. But he's uh, he's got the personality to play at that level, and he's got the toughness without doubt. I think he'd be a great Origin. I'd just have him somewhere in the seventeen. Mm. Mm. What about um for this game between the Raiders and Manly to to the mindset? To have that confidence mm. when you're down 20 points to be able to put up a, a fight back like that, what does that say about their mental strength as it a team? It shows your character, doesn't it? Mm. It shows uh, you know, they, they're down on a little bit of experience. And I think Ricky bit uses of, the word their DNA. DNA. Well, that's what they want to be known for. And if, if you base your DNA off hard work and a bit of character like they showed on the weekend, well, you know, the talent's going to develop. You know, they've got a lot of... <laughs> talent in their in their side and they're very inexperienced and Ricky's been very vocal about how patient he needs to be he would have been overwhelmed with this sort of win because it'll it'll do wonders for these young guys in the team well Someone, what about for Manly what does it do to them Joe no, they've just hit a bit spot? of a flat spot I wouldn't be too worried they've uh, they've been up for a long time and won some big games won some close games but uh, yeah I wouldn't be too worried they've just hit a bit of a flat spot in that nice moment Kaya Weeks come up through Manly. He, mm -hmm. he went there pretty much has been in their pathway system since he was a 14-year-old. So he has a lot to Manly and goes down to Canberra, gets a crack. Played 12 games for Manly, but uh, none at half back. And, you know, great to see him score a try and be part of a winning team. Like the last week was, that was tough. You know, they, they've been bashed a couple of weeks in a row, Canberra. So uh, it was nice to be able to have a moment like that. So far behind and then that's a great win. That is a really good win. You'll remember that forever. Someone who um, was in action for the Seagulls, who may not have been uh, early in the week, uh, Daly Cherry Evans, had to front the judiciary for the first time in his career. He's quite a clean skin. Do you see any of the shots from him at the judiciary? I saw him there. I was just leaving. I was just leaving the office actually as he was getting there. We're just having a chat. He was talking about how nervous he was, and I was, talking to, I was talking to some. Some people who were in the judiciary and they were saying when he was talking, you could see he was nervous and he was pretty quiet. Yeah, right. And he's normally a pretty confident sort of bloke. He's sort of he's been the figurehead really for 
the players over the last sorry, 10 years. He's been, you know, yeah. he's been a big part of the Players Association and you'd think he'd be very confident in there, but he... I couldn't imagine he'd been the naughty boy corner much growing up. No. Yeah, no. He was foreign. apparently walking Jeez, around those, saying hi to everyone. The pants he had on had been in the dryer or something. He's, <laughs> he'd been squatting because <laughs> they were tight around the rump. Good work, <laughs> David. We're going to need a fan you <laughs> off That's that red zone again. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Dominic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, a big Thursday night footy coming up. The Seagulls up against the Dolphins. Are we missing someone? <laughs> We've lost Billy. <laughs> I'm going to Here he comes. Mitch He's number his... two. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his skates on. He's coming in. Oh, he's still got it, Bill. <laughs> Good job, Bill. All right, we're talking did Panthers. Did I miss something, did I? <laughs> Nature calls. <No. laughs> we're talking Panthers, Rabbitohs, but the big news to come out of this one, uh, Cam Murray. Uh, suffered a hip f uh, a flexor injury. He's looking at six to eight weeks out for the Rabbitohs. They've already got injuries to Jai Gray, Dean Hawkins as well, but Cam Murray, he's someone just who puts in every single week. He's such a key part of this. Side. Irreplaceable. And we know that they've been struggling in the middle of the field. Uh, so they lose him. He does so much work and he does all the work that you don't see on the field. So without him, wow. Good luck. Well, you know what? He actually needs a rest too. So, oh, you know, Latrell's back next week. Um, you know, I think everyone's spoken about he needs to make an impact. And he's that sort of player that if he can, if he can get on a roll, Latrell, and they can win a couple of games, Cam Murray comes back in six to eight weeks, then it's mostly t he needs a rest. What he's about Jai Arrow? Jai Arrow a couple of times the other night tack made a tackle or fell and was just in agony. Well, he tried to save a try in the corner mm. and yeah. he stayed on the ground for... A good couple of minutes afterwards. What's the, holding what injury has he done? I think he's done his rotator cuff, I, I think. So he's, he's going he's to have to get a, a, an operation. I'm not sure exactly the injury, but he's going to have to get an operation at some time. Um, you know, he's obviously fit enough to play at the moment, but he looks to be in some sort mm. of discomfort. The one, the one thing with Cam Murray is he ball plays a fair bit as well. He's the link between the halves. So I think it's a, a big opportunity for for Cody Walker to really stand up into that first receiver role and take control. So what about the halves? Where do they go from here? Because we saw Whiten. I think they'd go Cody and Whiten. Cody and Whiten is the... And I think if Jai Gray was still fit, he'd be full-back and Latrell would be left centre. But well, he Jai won't Gray's be. gone no, now. He's so he's out, he's operation. He's done... mm. Just but getting back to Jai Arrow, Jai's at a stage of his career, what, he'd be late 20s? Yeah. <sighs> do you think he should just bite the bullet because, let's be honest, they're not going to make the semis. Do you think he has to be selfish and look after his longevity by getting the operation soonish rather than waiting till September, October? Well, maybe the new coach has a say in that. Uh, the, Sit down and speak to Joy, but... The club, have got to, the club have got to look after their player. If he's in a state to play, he plays. If he's, in, if he's not in a state to play and it's going to be detrimental to his longevity and his life after football... Well, he needs to get the operation. So that you've, you've got to rely on, on the medical staff at, at South Sydney. And we're not second-guessing the medical staff. It's just from the outside looking in. The other night, he looked busted. He looked ab absolutely busted. It's a shame Jai Gray has been injured. He's been a breath of fresh air. He's given a lot of enthusiasm and speed around the middle of the field. So uh, he looks like a long-term NRL player, but he's just got this little hiccup now with the Cindus Moses. Watching Jai Gray, watching... Um... Trey Chevy, Fuller. Stewart, mm. some of these little blokes coming into the game. Trey Fuller. Trey Fuller for the Dolphins. Gives a lot of people confidence and hope, you know, like just exciting. And you know, I think at times you think there's no place for these sort of people in the game because, you know, like you've got these big monsters running around. But they're having, they're having uh, a great moment, mm. at, you know, and I think doing a good thing for the, for the game in general. It's disappointing, though, for South Sydney with such a big injury toll as yeah. well. Yep. The results, obviously, have been pretty tough to come by. As they got the Dragons next week? I actually can't remember. Yes, I don't know. they got the Dragons. They lost a bit. That's a Latrell, problem. Latrell will be a, a big inclusion. Mm. Like, getting Latrell back after a, a month on the sideline, he's, you know, he's a big inclusion. And you can imagine he'll be pretty fired up and ready Absolutely. to go but as well. Once again, another combination of the halves. They've had three or four different combinations so far. Mm. And now they'll go Cody and, and Jack. Mm. All right. Mm. Well, yeah, but hopefully... then, you know what? You've got your best players in the most crucial positions. If you've got your halves, your fullback, and you've got Cookie and a dummy half, then all Fair of a sudden... Spine. 
all of a sudden you're covered. So mm. everyone else does their job and, you know, you can get a result. So they just need to fight a bit harder. There's some things happen in the game that where they just didn't show much fight at all and wouldn't matter who's in the jerseys. This year, NRL on 9 is your one-stop shop for all footy. That's right, Freddie. Not about the highlights. Action. Seven days a week. Billy and Gus podcast. Get that on your drive on the way home. Immortal behaviour. Grab a seat on the couch for that. And, of course, my favourite, Freddie and the Ain. The best footy brains, the biggest games. Don't trust the algorithm. Subscribe to NRL on 9 and get all your entertainment there.